Hello, my name is Jordan Visco, and welcome to this quick video demonstration of the ClinicAid medical billing software for Canadian healthcare practitioners. Uh, the first thing to notice about uh, the ClinicAid software is that it's actually run in an internet browser. It's uh, just a website, so to log into ClinicAid, all you have to do is come to clinicaid.ca and uh, click the login link, enter your username and password, and it logs you right into your account. Uh, that means you can use it from anywhere, so any uh, computer, desktop, PC, uh, laptop that has internet access can access Clinicaid. Um, you can also access it through your mobile phone um, or through a tablet PC. And uh, again, just <coughs> go to www.clinicaid.ca. Uh, we recommend using the Firefox or Google Chrome browser for the best experience. Uh, you can see I'm using Firefox here, but Google Chrome works just as well. And those would be available on uh, pretty much any device you can get your hands on. So there's no additional software to install. Um, and uh, you don't have to worry about uh, backups. We take care of all the hosting uh, in our data centers uh, around Canada. So I'm already logged into one of our demo instances here. And if I click um, over into my next tab, you can see I'm uh, logged in. This is the dashboard that you land on as soon as you enter your username and password to access your account. On this page, uh, you can see some things that I'm going to want to take care of. It gives me a quick overview here and lets me know I have 112 unsubmitted invoices and, tw and six invoices that require action. And so those would be things I haven't taken care of yet. Um, these would be any rejections I haven't handled or settled uh, or anything that came in underpaid. And these would be invoices that are, are uh, ready to be sent. The next tab down is the uh, Create Invoice tab. And this is kind of where the the meat of the invoice creation um, happens. Um, as soon as I click on the Create Invoice tab, my cursor lands in the patient information box and I can go ahead and type in a patient's name. So I'll just type in Mickey and you can see Mickey shows up there and I can click the Tab button and I'll go down to the next box. Um, now if I didn't have the patient in the system or if I typed in a name and they didn't show up, you can actually add a patient into the system right here by clicking the little plus icon. And you can then go and enter the first name, last name, and healthcare number. Uh, you don't have to enter in all this information, but it is um, you know, available there for you. Uh, if you click show all fields, you can get full address information for the patient, and you could enter that as well. Uh, but we're just going to not enter a new patient, we're just going to stick with Mickey Mouse. <coughs> um, the next box down is the referral ID of a practitioner, so you can either just enter a referral PRAC ID number or you can just type in the name. So I'm going to type in John. Um, and you can see I get a huge list of John showing up. Um, this is an Alberta interface so the referral IDs here are all going to be referral practitioners. We have interfaces for BC and Alberta as well which I'll show you, or sorry, BC and Ontario as well which I'll show you in a minute. Um, and they all come stock with uh, referral ID databases. <coughs> Um, after I've entered a referral practitioner, if I needed one, you can also leave it blank. If uh, you're a general practitioner, you can tab on down to the provider information. Now you can see my provider information is already pre-filled, and that's because I have a default provider set up top, so I don't have to select Doxivago each time. I could just tab right by if I wanted. Um, if it wasn't selected already, I could put my cursor in the box and Doxivago would show up, or I could do a search if I had lots of practitioners and find the one that I want. I'll just leave it on Doc Zhivago though and I'll hit the tab key again and you can see my cursor moves over to the code box. Now this is an Alberta uh, code box so when I do a search here it's going to pull up all the Alberta codes. So uh, commonly in Alberta 03.03a is a, a very common code, uh, just a visit not requiring history. Um, so I can type that in or I can do a search for it and select it. Um, if I wanted I could also just type in the uh, description. So if I typed in visit not requiring, um, you can see that all the codes that match that are coming up and I can select the one that I want. <coughs> now also, um, if I just wanted to use a list of favorites, uh, on the right hand side here I have my favorite sets. Right now I'm on a general set of favorites and you can see there's about 12 different sets of favorites in, in this particular uh, demo instance and I can select from any one of those and it'll give me a different list of favorite codes. When I want to select a favorite code I just select it and it shows up in the box. Now, <clears throat> this is an Alberta instance, so um, these are Alberta codes. Uh, that this calls fields is an Alberta field, and counter number, that's an Alberta field, fee modifiers, those are all Alberta fields. Um, in my next tab over here, I have a BC test instance, um, and if I were to go to the invoice form, it would have BC 
codes and then here's an Ontario instance and if I click on the create invoice form it's going to have Ontario codes uh, for instance the A001A here. So just to show you there that there's uh, three different um, currently there's three different provinces launched for Clinicaid and you're going to get a different line item uh, for each different province but we're just going to go through the <coughs> um, Alberta instance right now. So I've entered my code and then I'm going to go and in Alberta I'm going to select a fee modifier. The modifiers that show here are the ones that are applicable to that particular code. I'm going to leave calls at one and encounter uh, blank. And then diagnostics, again this is a search field so if I wanted to type in like hypertension uh, it's going to give me the available codes for hypertension. I can select them from the list or I can use a favorite set or I can just type in the code if I know it. Once I'm done with diagnostics, I can go over to the date and I can choose a date that I want. So I'm going to say it happened yesterday. And now that I've got my full line item filled out, I can just click add and it adds a line down here and it gives me a total. Now I can go through and I can add as many line items as I want for Mickey Mouse and Doc Shivago uh, on any date that I want to choose. So you can really easily go through and, and um, select multiple uh, visits. Um, <clears throat> Also, if I were to select, say, a different code here, and if I wanted to go through, it's really easy to just tab through these fields. So if I go tab, 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 I can go over to the fee modifiers. If I know it already, I can enter it, or if I don't have one, I can just tab on beyond it. It uses the same diagnostic code. It's going to keep it from line item to line item. If I wanted a different one, I could change it. Um, but you know, generally, if you're doing a lot of billings for a, one patient and one doctor, they're the same. So this is actually a, a feature you can set up in settings as well, whether or not that diagnostic code is retained. And then I can click add and I, you can see there now that I have two line items and my total is increased. So once I'm done this, I can go ahead and click save and it's going to save um, this bill for this patient. And I'm going to get a success message on the right hand side here. Um, underneath as well there's this previous invoices section and it's going to show me the last five invoices that were done for that patient, what date they were done on, any codes and diagnostics that were used um, as well. So now that we've created an invoice, I'm going to head down to Manage Invoices. And when I click on Manage Invoices, the tab that you're going to land on by default is the new tab here. And this is going to show you all of your new invoices. So those were ones that you have saved but haven't yet sent. And you can click these little green icons here to send them all individually. Or if you wanted to send them all at once, you can just check the checkboxes. And then the big Send button comes up on the bottom and you can send them all off. I'm just viewing 10 items per page right now, but if you wanted to send up to 100 invoices per time, you could view 100 invoices per page. You can also view invoices on this page by uh, just patient, so if you just wanted to see all invoices for you know, Mickey Mouse, you could do that, or if you wanted to see all invoices for a particular doctor, you could um, just type in the doctor's name or select them from here. And you can also choose any date range as well. Uh, so if I wanted to see all, new, all invoices since, say, 2004, then I can just click go and you can see there's 114 new invoices in the system which matched what was on my dashboard. If I head over to requires action now, uh, you can see there's six invoices in requires action, so those would be ones that had come back and I need to do something with. So uh, these are rejected here, I either need to edit them and, and send them back. Uh, you can see here by the modified um, beside the rejected status that this one's already been edited and it might be ready to send back. Um, and if I click to edit this invoice, uh, or sorry, if I click to view the invoice, the little eye icon there, I can see the rejection reason here. And I can read that rejection reason, figure out what's wrong, and then edit the invoice by clicking the edit button and send it back. Um, you can see down at the bottom here, there's also a transaction history. So this is going to let you know um, the history of the bill. So if it had been submitted and then rejected and then edited and resent, um, you'd see all that information down here. Uh, so you can see this one was sent on 0522 and then it's not really realistic but it was also rejected on 0522 and uh, here are the rejection reasons down there. Um, the next tab over from requires action is pending and so this is where all of your invoices will go when they've been sent but we haven't yet received a response from uh, the government uh, in each province and uh, the next one over is for payment due, so this would be for private invoices that you've created in your created invoice tab. So um, I showed you how to create a, an invoice for uh, the province, but you can also create private invoices that can be printed out and sent to patients. Uh, so this is where those would be. Um, held invoices, sometimes invoices uh, get held past a remittance period, and in that case they go over to the held section here. 
and then settled invoices or anything that was paid uh, or um, settled if it came back rejected for a good reason and, and you just click the settle button on the view page. And then also obviously you can view all invoices at once of any status. Um, there's also a search box here and you can use this to search any field on this page so if you just wanted to see anything with a diagnostic code of 401 you can just type 401 into there and click the search button or if you wanted to see all 03.03a bills you could run a search for that as well. And Once you have um, the bills that you want to see you can click export and the export uh, button on the bottom here will allow you to open that file in Excel and then you can play around and uh, run your own reports on your own invoices uh, which is um, you know, kind of fun depending on how uh, computer savvy you are. We also have stock reports that I'll show you in a moment in the report section here. <coughs> so the next section down from managing invoices is to manage your patients. Um, this is where you can see all patients that have been created in your system. You can click to view them, you can uh, click the little edit button to edit them, and you can click the add button to add. If you're adding a patient, you can click Show Hidden Fields again and you can get all that patient information. You could save a referring provider with a particular patient. Again, this is a, um, a lookup box, so if you type a practitioner's name in there, you can select the referral PRAC ID, or you can just type it in if you know it. And uh, you can also set a default service or diagnostic code and a default admission date for that patient as well. And you can also add uh, some office notes in this section here. Underneath Manage Patients is the report section. Uh, the reports are going to differ, pro differ province by province, um, but generally each province will have a cash report, which is a revenue received, a revenue by time period, so that's your revenue broken down into weeks, months, years for each practitioner. Uh, a remittance report, which is a history of um, uh, what came in on each remittance. And then there's also, uh, this is Alberta, and in Alberta we have some recurring service code eligibility uh, reports here. and uh, that would be for complex care billing, those kinds of things, and it's going to be different province to province. Under the Preferences tab, um, you can set your default sets of diagnostic codes and service codes here. Um, you can see these are all the sets that I've set. This is my primary one here, but you could set any of them as primary, uh, and you can add and delete them just uh, by creating new groups and, and deleting the old groups here. Um, under Providers, this is where you can see all of your providers. You could edit any of them. So uh, you can set default um, billing facilities or default billing numbers, uh, skill codes, things like that. Uh, and again, this is going to be different province by province, but uh, these are your provider defaults. <coughs> and then you can also set default invoices, which are uh, complete sets of forms that you can use to fill out any information on, uh, on an invoice. Uh, if you're interested in that, you can watch our other videos on YouTube. Uh, youtube.com slash Canada, and you should be able to uh, see the default invoices uh, in more detail there. Um, some users have admin access. Um, that allows you to add users. Uh, users are people who have a login and password to your, to your Clinicaid account and you can either determine whether they have um, access to the admin section or not. You can add your own referral providers um, if you notice that you'd like to add one that isn't in our our default database. We get a database from practitioners and from um, uh, provincial authorities and we add that into Clinicaid regularly but uh, from time to time there are practitioners that you may notice aren't in our database and if that happens you can add your own uh, just under this referral practitioners link here. Um, you can manage your uh, payment subscription here and then also uh, you can manage your private billing presets in the private billing section, so that would be the address that shows on your, your printable private bills. Uh, you can add custom service codes and you can add inventories for them as well. Um, so, you know, if you had an inventory of 100 and then you build one of those codes, then after having built that, you'd have an inventory of 99 left and you can reset your inventories at any time. Uh, you can add taxes and you can add private payers. So you can see here, metal ins medical insurance services is a, a private payer that can be associated with a patient and added on to uh, their private bills. So I hope that gave you a good overview of the Clinicaid system. If you have any questions, please uh, don't hesitate to contact us. On our website at the top here, there's a contact link, and you can contact us by mail, phone, or email. Um, and we're available um, during business hours and also for emergencies by phone. Um, if you uh, would like as well, you can go to our YouTube videos, youtube.com uh, slash Canada, and uh, you can see all of our 
uh, videos there that'll help you get started in each province because each province is slightly different and um, that there's some videos as as uh, uh, as well as some features videos and just uh, a lot of information that uh, can help you out with your billing. Thanks a lot for your time and uh, we hope to see you billing soon.